are we on? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Split the phone check. Lights. Lights. Cameras. This is Swanky. This is Lifestyle. This is Culture. Welcome to the social center of everything culture. Culture Daily. Some good music on there. Hey, we've got news coming in very soon for you. So make sure you are glued to this channel because we'll be breaking your back when the news comes out. You'll be very excited. But before we even tell you more about that news, receiving money from abroad is now easier than ever. Thanks to ZPay Mobile. I'll tell you about ZPay Mobile in a bit. But every time we uh, we we eat, you know, food and sugars are trapped between our teeth, leading to tooth decay, gum disease, and in some cases, foul breath. Now, brushing your teeth every morning and night with Pestodent Cavity Fighter um, gives your teeth the protection they need and uh, leaving you with 10 times stronger teeth like we play Stronger Today by Kanye West, all right? So Pepsodent Cavity Fighter is fortified with pro-fluoride and micro-calcium ingredients, sealing tiny and invisible holes in your teeth. Now, this prevents cavities, keeps your teeth strong and mouth healthy. As you can see on the screen right now, you know, Pepsodent Cavity Fighter. Like they say, maximum cavity uh, protection 10 times stronger. Now, also discover a world of innovation, a world of luxury, and a world many of people, many people dream of owning. Discover the world of Bang and Olufsen. It's a particularly true brand in the ever-evolving realm of high-end electronics that you might love to own. Find the showroom it's at Atlantic Towers Liberation Road right here in Accra, where each person day, month, and year a variety of drill-worthy equipment or electronic gadgets uh, ranging from exquisite uh, home theater, speakers, headphones, uh, TV sets, soundbar products are released. Bang & Olufsen like no one else. And on that note, um, let's get into the most exciting conversation of the century, especially for the men. This month, as we celebrate men's health awareness, very important. Today, we're talking about men's sexual health or men and sexual health whichever ways it's all in there no other than the man to help us have this conversation dr kelvin good morning good morning Jay. it's been doing? i'm fine it's been a minute it has it has very very long minutes yes 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 <laughs> let me also take this time to introduce the only uh, man oh, amongst I'm us <laughs> it's so far how are you doing I'm all right. Yeah. Yes. How are you doing? Uh, well, I'm fine too. You are a representation of the millions of women around the world who will yes. be interested in finding out things about men's sexual health on our behalf. Yes. <laughs> to be a man now. Wow. Now, wow. <laughs> Today I'll find out. Yes, you'll find yes. out. It's very important. Yes. Uh, and of course, you know, um, when you are when you are above eighteen, you're already an adult. Uh, certain conversations are very important in knowing because, of course, you are on your way to settlement. You deal with men. You do with boys. You do with the opposite sex. It's very important that we would have a female representation on this board. Hence the reason why AC is here. So AC, you're welcome to the conversation. Thank you. Yes, you represent all the women. Men's sexual health. Now, it's a very big conversation. Now, we're not necessarily focusing on um, manhood and, if I can say, you know, um, you know, talking about the ladies, uh, the women's own. But it's about understanding how men should keep... Uh, a prim proper um, sexual health. Now, uh, that's the combo we are going to dive into this morning. So, Doc, I want us to start from general health with regards to men, and um, let let's start from dieting, uh, not into detail, but let's start from dieting and how food in itself <laughs> can be. <laughs> See, we are coming from the mouth. <laughs> I like when you said not into detail. <laughs> We are kind of on the mouth. And um, some of the general practices that men can um, take into consideration to keep their, their health in check with regards to feeding. And as we grow, now we are speaking to an audience of from, let's say, about an 18, uh, yeah. I mean, from 15, but let's say an 18 to about, uh, uh, let's say, 35. The gray areas are 35 plus. So it's 15 below 30, uh, 35 plus. But let's talk to the fifth, 18 to 35-year-old um, man. And as we grow, you know, when you say when you're hitting 40, then positive <laughs> cancer is 10 at us like this. Guy, like <laughs> a guy. You know easy. You know easy. <laughs> It's time to flash you. It's time to flash you, Johnny. Your line be acting back. You be cool. <laughs> well, I mean, so generally, we, let's understand that men are terrible at keeping good health. Hey. Mm. I mean, that's, that's a hey, fact. Doctor, doctor, relax yourself. Doctor, doctor, doctor. 
Take it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Yeah. We are here for the truth. It's true. Fire away. Fire away. Take it easy for us, please. I actually don't like talking about men because it it puts me in a conflict of interest situation. You see. Are you also a Yes, I am. So use more. We we. Let's let's join us. No, but but the fact is about. 60% of men who actually go to the hospital go because somebody forced them to go, which typically tends to be the, the women. You know, mm. so they come and they say, My wife says I should come. come. You know, my wife says this. You know, so and, and, and it, it shows that's why men tend to die earlier. If you took a man and um, the same age as a woman, you know, men generally would die earlier than, than women. You know. Of course, of course, it goes to us. Give me my man. <laughs> So, based on customer feedback, that's why we go to the hospital. <laughs> when our main supplier says that the system is not working, like go and get <laughs> and, and, and even after they, they have come, right? Yeah. You've, you've diagnosed them. Let's say hypertension, mm. which indeed is more common in men than women. It's a, it's a man's disease, actually. They will not take their medication, I and mean, we will come to that later. You know, hey. they, they they hardly take their medication. Just because. Oh, is it ego? Like, yeah, man, yeah. 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 Oh, are they sick? You know, I'm sick, I'm off. Exactly. Yeah. You see, so, so generally speaking, men are not good um, caretakers of their own health. Mm. We, need, we need some other people to keep, uh, keep us in check, yeah. you know. Now, it shows in even how we eat. You mentioned dieting. Maybe from a cultural perspective, because most men tend not to be the, the domestic um, sex, you know, so they, they don't cook as much, you know, mm -hmm. so they tend to eat a lot of um, food from outside, mm. typically junk food. You're talking yep. to me, <laughs> you see. So, <laughs> mm. so you, you tend to find a, a lot of men, you know, coming in with um, gastrointestinal diseases, mm. so diarrheal diseases, among other things, you know, mm -hmm. because they tend to eat every, every and anything out there. Mm -hmm. Then they also tend to take a lot of um, alcohol. Mm. You know, so men drink a lot more alcohol than women would do, <laughs> which is actually a good thing because um, genetically or, or biochemically, women cannot handle alcohol as much as, as men, men can. can, you know, so it, in, in, it's, it's okay. But alcohol has its own complications as well, mm -hmm. you know, so then you have men coming in more with diseases of al alcohol related diseases like mm -hmm. liver cirrhosis, among other things. And hypertension because also alcohol also causes hypertension. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. then we have the smoking. Mm -hmm. There are more men who smoke than women. Preach, please. Preach. So, <laughs> so when you put all those things together, it kind of it kind of makes sense that um, uh, my first statement: <laughs> men die earlier women. than women. Women, women. correct, yeah. please. <laughs> you know, women. but but I mean that's why it's important that, that we take we we educate and put put us in perspective. So I like that a lot of the audience are younger because when we start doing some of these things earlier, you know, we can we can turn things around you know there are some things we cannot change like more men are involved in hazardous work than women so we can't do much about that even though there's a push from the from the other side you know to sort of equal equalize the 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 ratios on that level i mean i i am open to that i mean mm -hmm. let, let them come and experience mm -hmm. it and then we all see how it goes mm -hmm. but as of now more men are involved in hazardous work than mm -hmm. women are which contributes to the health as well, you see. But as much as depends on us, we need to, you know, get a bit more serious with our health, especially now that there's a lot of information out there, you know, because it's unacceptable that, for instance, you are hypertensive and you're not taking your medication just because you think you're a man. Hypertension doesn't respect sex. Mm -hmm. If you are a man or you're a woman, if you don't respect it, it will, you know, put you down, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know. It's called silent killer for a reason. And I'm, I started by saying that it is indeed a man's disease, you know, by our our biochemical nature, by our um, hormonal um, profile, men generally have a higher blood pressure. You know, because obviously we have we, we have bigger bulk, so the heart has to do more work to get blood through the body. So the men body. generally have a higher blood pressure. You know, mm. and blood pressure will naturally increase as you grow older because of our diet um, and our lack of exercise. You know, there's a cholesterol buildup. The vessels become a bit harder, so the heart has to do far more work. So if you're already starting a bit higher than the women. And you're not taking good care of yourself, then it means that you're you're going to tip into hypertension much earlier. Mm. So men generally start having hypertension at a younger age than women would do, you know. And because they don't take their medication, they suffer com um, complications more commonly than women do. So it's a it's a major problem. So we we really have to hammer hammer that point. <laughs>
I, wow. don't like, I don't like how the room this is so is, silent. I, I mean, you have... We are listening. We're in shock. <laughs> you have completely, like, the first, first ten minutes, the shots where we take no. It's our fault. fault. The whole time I was just hearing, the, 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 it's our fault. It's, it's our, our fault. fault. It's, it's our, our fault. fault. Mm. But, I mean, this, this has given us some uh, clear understanding of you know, some some like I I probably didn't pay attention much attention to it yeah. that that way, but clearly it looks like yeah. um, we we bring ourselves to some of the problems that you know very very true uh, we it's face, and the true. part that even hits hard is uh, eating outside, you know, um, the junk food that we are taking because we are not built domestically to handle certain things internally like that, you know, at home and cook and be very conscious of what we are eating. Yeah. I mean, we, we we step outside. But once you, since you mentioned eating outside, I want to ask you about the quantity. You know, we, we see for a man goes to a chop bar, the, the thing is to Chari. let me have a crantier, <laughs> let me have this, let me, let me trip you and some, you know, that kind of attitude. I don't know if that in any way also has its effect. It does. It does. So um, the average, well, I, I, let me just say, the average Ghanaian eats too much per sitting. Mm. You know, so our, well, our portion size are too much mm. at, any, at any particular sitting. Maybe it's because a lot of people don't eat the three square meals, so they try to make up for their, their, yeah, their inability yeah, to yeah, eat. Yeah, uh, you yeah. know, by, so if, if you are doing the 011 or 001, they eat heavily at any sitting. Now, when you do that, um, the, body, the body does not really function like that. You know, so at any point in time, it needs a certain amount of calories, a certain amount of um, mm -hmm. a protein, a certain amount of carbs, etc. So whether you eat two balls of kinky or three balls of kinky, if the body's need at that particular point is um, can be satisfied by let's say one ball, it means that all the extra they have eating is going to be stored as fat. Mm -hmm. Now you mm -hmm. know fat now has its own issues. So that's why sometimes somebody approaches you say, um, I'm broke, I need money. Now if you look at yourself, you 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 are you are you know slim, you know, kind of fit. That person who is supposedly broke and very poor is actually obese. Mm. It's not because they... they, they Have I mean, a good life. Yes, it's mm. just because of what I just described. Because when you eat heavily at one sitting, it could be that you're eating once a day, but the body is going to store the rest as fat. You know, and so if if it's better to actually eat small portions more often. Mm. So that's why the, the dietitians would actually tell you that you're supposed to eat six times a day. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but even I can, I mean... For, for a man, a for a man, which I know we are supposed to, you know, uh, balance all the, mm -hmm. the vitamins and everything, but for a man, are there any specifics that you should be, you know, should focus on? We are drilling it down to sexual health later on, but just since we have you here, let's do, talk about general health. So typically, um, balanced diet depends on who you are and what you do okay. and even what stage of life you are so it's very difficult to define balanced diet right now because there are so many different categories of people watching. okay if you're a manual worker for instance you need more carbs than you do need other things because you need energy you're going to be lifting heavy weights if you're a corporate worker you need less carbs and so corporate workers who eat, who are going to eat banku at lunch are actually causing themselves a lot of a lot of disservice mm. you see <laughs> are you re, re, louder louder <laughs> so why you, why you change your face louder is it why you change your face Bro, corporate, like, workers, food, man, corporate workers corporate workers who are stop. eating a lot of banku at lunch are doing themselves a disservice Service. service yeah yes because you're not using enough energy to you know to, to burn all that exactly mm -hmm. you know but speaking about men in general i don't know if you are aware but men cannot handle meat mm -hmm. yes <laughs> that excites me <laughs> why is it we can't handle meat Please. Yeah. Well, with that question i want it to be a teaser hold on <laughs> Hold on. That, 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 that question is going to be a teaser. We are going to answer that. But in the meantime, real quickly, summer is officially here and all the biggest titles come alive on the big screens at Silverbed Cinemas. Now, catch Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse, The Flash, Transformers. All these are male movies. Oh, Rise of the Beast, uh, Swaki, Babi, Babi the Inside. Mission Impossible, Indiana Jones, uh, Finest of Hollywood. These people, they eat Banku because they, when they're working, it'll be small. Um, Hollywood, Bollywood and Hollywood movies and top quality Ghanaian mm. movies this season at Ghana's number one cinema franchise and complement your movie experience, of course, with Ghana's number one popcorn. Now is the best time of the year to create and share memories with the ones you love at the West Hills and Accra Mall branches. Follow at Silverbed Ghana on all social media platforms or visit the website uh, for showing times or you can check out the website which is uh, silverbedcinemas.com forward slash West Hills or Accra. Uh, like they say, Silver Bird Cinemas, it's all about entertainment. Now to that point, that trailer. <laughs> Meat. Yes. Hey! Yeah, so it's surprising that culturally, we, I mean, men tend to have the larger portion of the meat because um, genetically, men cannot handle meat as well as women. 
I'm sure you've heard of a disease called gout. Yes, yeah. gout. Which is very common in men, especially as you grow older. It's a joint problem, which yeah. is um, crystals of, of one of the amino acids. You know, amino acids are from proteins. Yeah. So if you eat too much meat, your <laughs> risk of gout increases. <laughs> wow. So, Charlie? yes. So Wait, as, is, as, is, as you go older. Is there a type of meat or meat? like Red all? meat. I mean, so it covers, it really covers Charlie? all meat. Wow. <laughs> you know, you know, bearded meat. <laughs> you, you know, that one not the cause gout. <laughs> <laughs> that one not the cause gout. I beg you. Yeah. Wow. So as you go older, you should actually, you should actually be cutting back on meat. But Charlie had. I mean, that one I won't lie. Mm. Wow. No, because I mean, why? The reason why I'm really scared is that just uh, last week, I felt like I hadn't had enough home food, so I requested for some home food, and I made them pack it with. Look, there's more meat than stew. Charlie. Hey, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm asking this because. Do we actually know this and we have turned a blind eye to it or dedication has not trickled down to, to yeah, us? Yeah. Because well, it's, 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 it's even in our traditional setting, yeah. in our homes, right? The father or the man, mm-hmm. you know, bigger, it's, bigger. it's believed that they are the ones who go to hunt yeah. to bring the meat. And so they deserve well, all the br- meat. Brilliant submission. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, there. so how? Has this been an old, la- an old age long thing or we are... We are just discovering. This. Well, from where I sit, I mean, the information is all out there. I mean, if you if you go if you Google gout right now, you mm. know, it it will be there that more men suffer gout than women do. You see, but as to whether the association has been made or the education, as you said, has gone out enough, you know. But for for again, it's also a bit challenging because the question now is how much meat is okay. Mm. Now sitting here, I can't answer that question. Mm. You see, because because some somebody might be eating plenty meat and not get gout. Another person might not be eating a lot of meat, but end up getting gout. The thing is, everybody is different, you know. And so how your body, you know, processes meat may vary. I mean, would differ from the next person. But statistically, we know that more men will end up with gout than women. And so it tells you that there is something with men that makes them, you know, have that tendency. And so the, the, the teaching then is cut back on meat as you grow older. You know. Mm. Okay, so we've we've, we've discussed uh, uh, blood, we've discussed wrists, gout. You know, we are coming down. <laughs> Very important. <laughs> we are coming down. Um, I mean, it's it's like it, the question Olin is asking is a very important one because um, it's one thing even knowing what gout is, you exactly. know, and it's and another thing having to understand that too much meat will be causing. Um, and of course, look at our traditional setting. I mean, in Ghana, meat is a big deal. Charlie, you know, uh, are there Charlie. any risk with too much fish? So I mean. So first of all, fe- I mean, too much of everything is bad. Okay. Yes. You yes, know. So yes, so agreed. too much too much fish would obviously not be not not be good good for you. However, having said that, fish is better than red meat on okay. so many levels. You know. So if you can replace your red meat with fish, you are in a better position. Mm. You know. But everything still I- in moderation because okay. too much of everything will end end you up having. Please, problems. I had this myth. I, I beg you. I had it from St. Peter's. I was passing around the school. So let me let me no move it to the school no <laughs> That if you chew well, mm-hmm. it helps uh, with, I don't know what's supposed to help you, but if you chew well. Okay, if you don't chew well, it has its um, repercussions. Yeah. It's, it's, it's yes and no. I mean, the thing is, chewing helps because digestion actually starts in the mouth. Right. Okay. There are some enzymes in saliva right. that begin the digestion process. So okay. if you actually chew very well, you, you know, it, it improves the, or it speeds up the di- digestion process. Okay. Because by the time it gets into the stomach, it's already begun. So it kind okay. of passes, it, it goes through quickly. If you don't chew well, it means that the food is going to stay longer in the stomach because now the stomach has to do the work of breaking, trying to break down the food. Mm. Okay. You know, so okay. chewing is a mechanical activity to crush the food, you know, because, uh, and, and if you remember from physics or even chemistry, the, the finer the finer the item is the larger the surface area yes when the surface area is broad enough then the contact between the enzyme and that food you know there's a lot more contact so it, it breaks it down faster okay so if you don't chew your food so, so for instance you take a bo- uh, 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 you, you cut the fufu uh, how do you say it in english i don't know you, you, uh, you know that <laughs> <is the> thing. they say in english if you cut the thing and you throw it into your mouth Right, it's a it's a big ball, and you swallow that big ball. Mm-hmm. It's going to take the stomach a lot of work because stomach is just muscle. So it's going to try and and, and masticate. Masti- well, mastication is the is the, the chewing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're going to have to simulate. Internal, internal, internal mastication, exactly, yeah. exactly. Now, 
a, a tube trying to masticate and push. It the, won't be as effective as, as the as grinding of exactly. The, the, the you know, so that so that's why chewing is important. Mm. You know, but having said that, children hardly chew, but they are they, 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 they are fine. You know, so eventually the stomach is able to get the job done. It's just that it takes it takes longer. So if mm. you don't want if you don't want the digestion process to take long, you know, chew your chew food up. well. Mm. Mm. I see. <laughs> I, 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 I said more. more. <laughs> <laughs> Because Bro, the speed we used to swallow that for food alone. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure mean, the stomach is just there going. And <laughs> they try to say something we could do to count, you know, the meat matter now because I didn't see. But you see, let me, let me uh, well, it's morning, it's my very graphic, but if you pay attention to children, sometimes when they eat and they eat very fast and they go to poo, I mean, it's yeah, morning, the food yeah. is still inside. Prepared, exactly. Right? It means that the digestion process was yeah. not good enough. Yeah. Mm. Well, that one, yeah. So chewing mm -hmm. is is very very important because so, it helps improve. So look, the are you saying thing. that is what contributes to our pot bellies? So you see, he's uh, asking for me. <laughs> he doesn't have. <laughs> so if, if <laughs> so, if I if, if I if I link this question to the question about chewing, yeah. If digestion process takes long. Let's use typically in the evening. So you, you've closed from work, you've had dinner, but you didn't chew well. So now instead of digestion process taking, let's say, one or two hours, it's taking three to four hours. But now you couldn't wait that long, you've gone to sleep. What happens is once you sleep, your energy requirement actually drops significantly. So your body does not actually need as much energy. So now everything you've eaten will literally be converted straight fat. to fat. For storage, another day. For storage, for another day. And that day never counts because you're yeah, always because going Because you to eat in the morning again. Exactly. So more storage. You know. So you have power bank, but I never use them. Exactly. Because technically, between eating <laughs> and sleeping should be at least four hours. Mm. So that, which means that if you plan on sleeping at 10, you need to eat, be, have, have done, you need to have finished dinner by six. Wow. So that you give yourself four hours. Then all the food is digested. Most of the energy is used up so that you don't store a lot of fat. But unfortunately, many of us, Charlie, we get to the, we get home around nine, we eat yeah, nine thirty, nine thirty, we are asleep. I, I, I want to know about the flip side of that because I also watched something where they were talking about insulin spikes in the morning. Mm -hmm. So when we wake up, the first thing we don't necessarily need to jump on that early morning breakfast that we've been told because of the most of the breakfasts are heavy on sugars. Sugars, mm -hmm. but your body should have enough to take you till about twelve one where you could have a, the meal. So if you can just expand on that for us so there are so many so many theories but um you, you see your body has gone through i i about six hours six to eight hours of fast right so when you wake up in the morning your your, your stomach is empty then um what what i usually typically advise my 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 clients is that the best time to actually exercise is in the morning because of that fact your stomach is empty, which means that if your body needs energy, it's going to rely on the stored fat. one, the fat. Mm. You see, but many of us, um, we, we don't exercise. So we already come up with that empty stomach and we start our day with a heavy breakfast. Many of us have, we are eating wache for breakfast. Watch, some people are eating wache as early as 7 a.m. for breakfast. Mm. Some people are eating even heavier breakfast. It's not, actually, it's not a good thing because if the stomach has been that empty, you want to sort of ease it in. Introduce. You know, exactly. So something lighter would be, would be better. So exercise and a light breakfast, start your day. So yeah. watch it at 8 a.m., 9 a.m. is not it's recommended. It's not the best. From, from where I sit, it's not the best. <laughs> Especially if you are not a manual worker. <laughs> if you're not going to use that much Brennan's, and exactly yeah. Yeah. you're not going to use that much energy you need to you need to cut back on how much but these trends, I, I, these trends I are really confession. dangerous to us so because I have a confession then Confer. because because oh, this guy there. Uh, because as we all sit here <laughs> in fact sometimes you know we don't do much do zero we just drive he drive best this place, uh, only they will drive is Toyota. I will get here, I meet to Toyota, I get drive, I get and Then when we finish the show, we go to a place called Nuka Bite. <laughs> the, the, if you see the swallowing way boys they do at 10 10 30, Ricky and things, they swallow Charlie <laughs> Evans. Boys, let me mention their name so that we can discuss this with them yeah, after. The reigning champion is fake, you see, fake that, that, with the, the irony is that the person who eats the most. In this whole establishment, <laughs> he has a flat stomach. I was I was going to ask him about that. Those who have like great metabolism. You know. Is it? Let's it's ask a, if it is. A, it's a fallacy. Hey, Thank see. you, Ricky Wate. The Koso. I've actually realized that a lot of people who actually have cholesterol derangement tend to have, you know, cholesterol not, mm. derangement. Yes, they tend to have a flat tummy <laughs> and they, are, they, they they tend to be skinny. <laughs> Team no You know. Yeah. <laughs> where, where, whereas a lot of people who are overweight tend to actually be, you know, not too deranged when it comes to cholesterol. Is it real? <laughs> I'm going to live forever. You don't but know. But you see, here's the thing. Yeah. The reason why this is this is 
this this tends to be the case is that the people who are slim they are actually terrible at monitoring what they are eating because they are they're taking it for granted exactly i'm skinny so hey let me eat anything so they they actually uh, invest a lot in junk food and everything so then they actually get all these things earlier now if you're already overweight most people are kind of conscious okay so if i eat more i already gain weight so let me manage what i'm mm. eating so mm. they tend to be a, a bit more careful what they are taking what they're in. taking in they're conscious of it yes but the, uh, the metabolism plays a key role because yes indeed when you're taking the food your body how your body treats that food is what is what we call metabolism because right. you have to break down the food to release the energy out of there mm -hmm. to use for the for your activity some mm -hmm. people will break down the food faster they are more efficient so those are the you know the fast, the fast metabolic Mm. Then there are people who it takes them a while to get to get into the in, like the metabolism thing going. Mm. So those who are faster at metabolism tend to be the the, 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 slim, the slim guys, mm. and then those who are slower tend to put on weight. You know, oh, much easier. What about this conversation of eating for taste versus eating for nutrition? Because I think we've all got to a point where <laughs> we eat for taste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no, even when it's Look not necessary for us to bro we last for them. Okay. But we they go after it. Oh yeah, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 it's like we are eating for taste rather than eating for because it's fuel, right? Mm -hmm. The the whole point of eating is to stay alive and to make yeah. your body healthy. Yeah. But it's like we've turned eating now into a social event, a point for enjoyment, a pleasure thing. So I mean, Great question, what, 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 yeah. what 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 like should I stop buying food because it tastes good? Because that's what that's the main driver. If you ask anybody what you go chop, the answer they are going to give you is going to be on what they are expecting to taste. You see, you are trying to let people not like me as a doctor. Yeah? No, this no, please. If they like you, I'll be worried. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're supposed to eat for survival, you know. So at the basic level, food is meant to keep you alive for the, for the next day, you see. Everything else is is a luxury. So if you, if you have a chance to eat, to eat for taste, I mean, that's like, that's not part of the requirement. It's an... It's an add on so the basic level is you eat to sustain your life mm. everything else is is luxury that's why dieting is hard yes i i, I agree with that mm. you know in fact and, and let me let me even add to that you are supposed to eat because it's time to eat you don't eat because you are hungry because mm -hmm. when you eat because you are hungry you tend to overeat mm. and that goes back to to the point i made earlier you know, your, your eyes become bigger than your stomach, as they say. <laughs> yeah, so you're supposed to eat because it's time to eat, not because you're hungry. Mm -hmm. So it's breakfast time, you eat. It's lunch time, you eat. It's supper time, you eat. When you do that, you actually, um, you are in control. So you eat the right portions um, of food. What are Please those allow things? me to explain this to the audience mm -hmm. properly. Basically, what Doc is saying is that you, see, you don't wait till your full light is yellow before you buy food. You know, once you wait, it, you know, at a certain threshold, you just want to make sure that you, it, your, your full is always at a certain level. <laughs> You just in case of yeah, you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so you don't you don't wait to yellow lights for you buy you buy food. That's what we are trying to say here. Yeah. I, yeah. I I wanted to find out from Doc. Um, let's being very practical in the environment and demographic we find ourselves in. Many of us cannot afford three square meals. Hmm. This matter. We can't do <laughs> breakfast, <laughs> lunch, supper. It's almost impossible. Even if you're coming from, you know. You do a well-to-do family with the work you do, or depending on the kind of work you do, you're not going to get the luxury of eating breakfast, lunch. I don't know when it went wrong, but <laughs> brah, some of us we eat once a day. The next time we are eating is maybe what 11, 11 p.m. or 10 p.m. Maybe that one's maybe it's, a, it's a shawarma or maybe it's a burger or or, or or something. So I want I really want us to practicalize this in the kind of setting we find ourselves yeah. in. What is the best way forward? Because now, I can say the average Ghanaian wakes up in the morning. If it's not cocoa and both fruit, it is watchy. Let me ease you your question. <laughs> you mean, doc, question B and C. Your question. <laughs> can, can you help us establish the right times to eat and the estimated right portions? Hmm. Because since you said you are supposed to eat when it's time to eat, not when you are hungry. Yeah. So when is it time to eat breakfast? When is it time <laughs> to eat lunch? When is it time to... Because, bro, I had in lunch. Yesterday, I had lunch like five. But that one is not lunch. Before, if you exactly. come and ask me when I had dinner, maybe I'll leave the show. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, if I had lunch at five, then Adam is up to that. I've not had breakfast. So <laughs> what are the right times? And what kind of thing am I supposed to be eating and not? Because, like you said, food now, it ain't chilling. 
I know, right? Food is part of going out and having fun. You can eat at home, go out, and still eat because mm -hmm. we come out. Make they bring kebab, make they bring shawarma. Mm. But if it's about fueling, give us those times and the discipline that we should follow. I think so, that's what uh, so unfortunately, Achimota affiliate was saying. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I can't, I can't answer that question because, uh, you know, like I said, everybody is different. Work schedules are different, right? One of the one of the the areas that is has been classically established is uh, dinner. Between dinner and sleep should be four hours. That one is is been established because if you are if it takes about four hours to empty the stomach, so you want to actually go to go to bed with the stomach empty, then you don't store as much fat because by the time your energy needs drop, you have utilized um, as much of the calories you have ingested. So that one is is quite well established. The rest of them is. Um, it's all over the place because if your work schedule requires you to be at work at 6 a.m., for instance, we cannot say that breakfast time is, is supposed to be 8 a.m. Mm, I'll you be know. talking to Doc by another time. <laughs> so you have, to, you have to have breakfast at a time that is convenient for you. You know, It could be early breakfast, it could be a late breakfast, but breakfast is important. Skipping breakfast altogether is not a good idea. Mm. You know, If you actually, and, and this is, if, if you are going to skip a meal, and this is especially to the corporate workers, if you are going to actually skip a meal, the, I, the meal you can actually skip is lunch and then have an early dinner. That's actually a, a better strategy than skipping breakfast because when you skip breakfast, you prolong how I mean the, the the length of time that you are going without without food. Of course, ostensibly the idea is that I'm going to be breaking down my fat, but you mentioned the insulin spike and then some some other other related things could then end up causing you problems. So you want to actually at least break the fast with something, you know. The reason why skipping lunch is a better idea is because as a copy worker, you are sitting pretty much the whole day. So there's no massive use of energy. Exactly. So if you go and fill your, fill your stomach with a heavy lunch and you come back to continue sitting... That deficit becomes unhealthy. Exactly. You know. And then to, add to, to come back to your question, the reason why... I mean, I know, first of all, living healthy is expensive. I mean, it's expensive to live, to live healthy. it's hard to discipline. It, exactly. It's, 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 it, it takes a lot of discipline. Mm. So it's expensive. Mm. No doubt about that. But the second level is that, as, as Cyril said, because we have attached a social kind of clout to eating mm. it makes it even more expensive you know and then the pressure i mean once they brought the food you can't say you won't eat so you, you you are forced to eat you know and so because of that our perception of what a meal should be is a problem so people assume that once i said i must eat maybe kinky i had a i had a grandmother may she rest in peace who if she doesn't eat fufu she, she hasn't eaten. You can give. She, she can be eating rice. If you haven't given her food, she hasn't eaten. Right. You see, so when the, when when people have that perception that food must be food must be served, you know, in a plate must be rice here, this mm. there, this there, then it, it creates a problem. But what if your lunch could be a, 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 um, an apple? Mm. What if your lunch could be two bananas? That's also a meal. That can be lunch, and it's actually healthy because as as a copy worker, you don't need that much energy. So if you mm. can actually replace some of your meals with fruits, in which case you might not end up spending as much money at the end at of the, the day. End, yeah. You see, so it's a it's a whole there's a cultural compo uh, component to this discussion. There's a lack of knowledge component as well because people don't know that. Um, if they are eating this much food every day, they are causing problems for themselves. You know that's why hypertension, diabetes, they are called lifestyle diseases because it's actually what we do on a daily basis that ends up with those conditions. So mm -hmm. ideally, want, okay. so, so ideally, so doc, based on what you're saying, ideally yeah, we, we, are, we come are, to sex here to see our boys hype. Hey, there is sex there. Yeah. <laughs> if you die, grab the sex. <laughs> <laughs> if you get gout, what ideally, kind of sex you go have, my brother? <laughs> if, if I understand what you're saying, so ideally in the the setting we find ourselves mm -hmm. in, we don't necessarily really have to you know, eat fried rice and chicken, you know, in the afternoon. We could just get like an apple, yes. banana, yes, 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 yes. watermelon, mm -hmm. or just basically fruits. fruits. That would serve as um, good it substitutes. It will still fill your stomach. But the good thing about fruits and vegetables is that they, 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 ha it's, they have a lot of fiber. Right. And fiber sort of sits in the stomach and, and uh, uh, attracts water. So okay. you are full, you know. The stomach is, kind, the stomach is just a sack. With, with sensors on it, you know, it's just like your fuel tank. Mm. When your fuel tank is full, you can't overload it. Right. It will send a signal, it's full, I'm and full. then you tell the guy to stop. Right. You know, when your stomach is full, that's the same thing. It sends a signal, I'm full, it's okay, I can't eat anymore. Mm. And when you continue eating, there, that's when you now have the problem, the pain, the discomfort, you can't mm. sit, you can't stand. Uh -huh. So when the stomach is filled with something, it could be water, it could be um, fruit, it could be fried rice, mm. you know, all, all of those things will send a signal that I'm full, it's enough. Mm, so mm. now the question is then then to you, what are you going to fill the stomach with? 
Right. You see, because if you just feel the stomach water, water will pass through the stomach like after five minutes, you are back to being hungry. So obviously water is not a good idea, you know. But you need something in there to hold the water. So fiber is good. So fruits mm. have fiber, vegetables have fiber, gary has a lot of fiber. Mm. <laughs> so we can eat gary chickens in the afternoon. I see. Okay, I, I, I've been, I've, I've shared the time perfectly, perfectly you know, yes. it was 30 minutes on food. Uh, it's well, I have a last food question. Okay, go ahead, please. So, would you say it's more about eating the right thing, or is it more about having the most active lifestyle? Because we see athletes, bodybuilders, footballers, blah, 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 the things they eat. Maybe one person's daily meal is like my three days. <laughs> but if you see that person's body too... So this question, you've you actually answered this question. There's actually an ongoing debate right now all over, I mean, medical, social media, etc. Now, those same athletes, when they retire, what happens to them? Mm. Everything blew, Maradona. So then they tell, so now, so now, now, answer the question. Which one is more important, the diet or the exercise? The, the, the diet, please. No. Which one, which one is more important? The exercise. Good? Because they stop exercising. Exactly. But they've gotten used to that kind of exactly. routine mm -hmm. eating. Exactly. And now the body can't handle it. But you're also old. You are 65. Can't yeah, go to the gym for five hours. Yeah. So generally speaking, as you go older, your your metabolism is going to slow down. So you, you, when you were younger, I mean, Charlie, you were slim. Whether whatever you did, you can eat three yeah. balls of banku. You're okay. Mm. But now as you go, you go older, just the one ball, uh, you know, you're already you eating more. So that's mm -hmm. a fact. As you go older, your metabolism will slow down. You know. But exercise plays a very, very important role, and it cannot be overemphasized. Unfortunately, there's so much noise about diets that people are crazy about this diet or that diet. Dieting is kind of a, a, shortcut. a shortcut, you know, or a supplement. Dieting is a supplement to something, and that thing is a physical, physically active lifestyle. If you're not physically active, it doesn't matter how much of a diet, you, whatever diet you go on, because you cannot be on a diet forever. You will stop the diet at some point, mm -hmm. you know. Whereas the physical activity is something that you can do every single day for the rest of your life. I mean, look around you. There are 80-year-olds who are still jogging. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, Doc, I, 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 my challenge here is the, the conversation concerning dieting and exercise has always applied the 80-20 yes. rule, mm -hmm. you know. So they say, oh, no matter how many times you go to the gym, how many times you work out, you know, dieting is a very important, you know, element mm -hmm. to either muscle building, keeping a fitness lifestyle. So, so how do we reconcile this? Because <laughs> so, so okay, so let me. Let me I, I was using dieting lightly. I mean, loosely to refer to when people want to lose weight. Right. You know, okay. So lose. They okay. go on this diet or that diet. Okay. But diet. When we say diet in general, is what you what you are eating is a, is is what we call diet. Right. Right. Okay. You know. So you can actually be on a diet to lose weight. You can be on a diet to gain weight. You can be on a diet to to boost your muscle gain. You can be mm. on a diet for all sorts of purposes. Mm. But generally speaking, when people talk about going on a diet, they are trying to lose weight. You know, and they are going on a diet without necessarily increasing their physical activity. You know, so the diet becomes the mainstay, but diet cannot be the mainstay. Mm. The diet is a supplement to whatever else you are doing. You see, because at the end of the day, you can starve yourself all you want. The body also produces its own, um, its, its own um, fat. Mm -hmm. The body produces its, its own cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Those processes must go on mm. because th there's a place for cholesterol. If, if you don't have cholesterol in your body, you cannot transmit information from your brain to your spinal cord. There's cholesterol that actually lines the, the nerves for it to function. You know, wow. so, so, so even if you don't eat meat, because that's where cholesterol comes from, your body will still produce cholesterol. Wow. The point I'm trying to make is that you can't just go on a diet to lose weight and leave it there. When you stop that diet, the weight will, will come, come back, back because you have not built the, the habits that will sustain the, exactly. And that is where the physical activity comes in. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, well, let's, let's, let's hold on right there and then um, let's keep going down. Um, so we've been having great conversations with Dr. Kelvin on uh, dieting. Now, since we're talking also um, men's uh, sexual health, now it's not about sexual performance. It will come to that, but we're talking sexual health. Um, let's let's dovetail the conversation to that, that space um, now. Equally, how does dieting, if I can say that, or can dieting affect a man's sexual health in general? Well... As they say, you are what you eat, mm -hmm. you know, so, <laughs> and you are what you do. So if you, are, if you are unhealthy, you cannot have good sex when you are unhealthy. And sexual health, as the name implies, mm -hmm. requires you to actually be healthy as a person. So you cannot dissociate the whole concept of sex from the person. Are there any habits 
as well. That's um, you can just take time to think through that affects sexual performance and drive and all those Ooh. and all the things that are necessary and are, are needed, you know, from the development or creation of uh, semen or all that. Are there any <laughs> libido, your <laughs> testosterone? <laughs> yes, all those things in there. It's the, it's, they, they, they all they are all en encompassing. So if you are not eating right, if you are not physically active, your libido, um, your semen, everything, not, nothing will be right. Mm. You see, so so that so that you cannot necessarily say that I'm taking, let's say, I'm eating this food because I want to improve, boost my my sexual health. Mm. When you're you 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 are hypertensive, for instance, mm. you can you cannot do that because if your blood pressure is high. Your body, remember, remember that your body is a, it's a machine that is self, it's a self-sustaining machine. So if there's something going on with you that um, can kill you, your body will not focus energy or focus activity on another part of the part of the body that is mm -hmm. non-essential. Let me use, let me let, let, let let me see. Assuming, let's say, your hand was cut right now and mm -hmm. you're bleeding profusely, right? And your body had to had to put in measures to save your life. It can actually cut off blood supply to other parts of your body and maintain just your brain and your heart, so that you could actually end up losing your legs, <laughs> losing your hands. It's but you, but, but you still, because the, the body must sustain itself. It's it's kind of like a company mm. where they would they would say that we are downsizing just to, to become profitable. That's how the body operates. And so if you are hypertensive and your blood pressure is poorly controlled, you cannot have good a good sexual and um, you cannot have you cannot have good sex. You probably won't mm -hmm. even last long. Mm -hmm. one, one, you, you might not even get an erection. I was even coming to ask about this two minutes conversation. Speaking, speaking about <laughs> getting an erection, I knew hey, uh, hey. a part of it is uh, neurolo neurological. Yes. And a part of it is also uh, the rest of the, mm -hmm. the body. Where instances where men say stuff like, oh, me, me try to daughter, not my alert, those kind of conversations, <laughs> that address, that seem to counter the neurological um, <laughs> so short. Then? Oh, but you've heard this. You know what I'm no, saying. No, it's a joke that we see people, men, men. Uh, what did you say? Or never imagine to me go to tuna, Praise the Lord. <laughs> so, <laughs> so in such a, such things where we need like a jump start, you know when yeah. your battery is not good, then the taxi driver, <laughs> then you, at least. But if you park again, or uh, yeah, what? So yeah. you chat too, or I drink this, or I take that. That's where you have the Viagra, blah blah. But for those drugs, I know those are more. Biochem, like the Viagra is for blood flow and all those things. But the neurological too, is there so, anything we can do about that? So the difficulty with this alcohol, alcohol uh, thing is that... And enhances. Uh, so first of all, alcohol is not an enhancer. But it's a very difficult thing to disprove because the one who has taken alcohol believes he it so much. He went to do the job. Exactly. However, this has actually been researched where they actually had partners, not one, like mm. hundreds of mm. partners. So they would actually give um, them, so they, they would actually have sex without alcohol. Mm. They would have sex with alcohol. And then a and placebo then, or just without a placebo? They, 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 so it was, it was a double blind. They did, okay, they, they did the, the whole okay. thing. Mm. And it is clear that alcohol does not enhance sexual activity. If anything at all, it actually de depresses it. And, 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 and that's actually, actually true because alcohol is a, a CNS depressant, a neurological depressant. But alcohol also has an initial um, inhibitory effect on the, on the same CNS. So then that's why when you are tipsy, you are, it's, easier, it's easy to get excit excitable or you are easily excitable when you are tipsy. You know, and so because of that initial um, disinhibition that alcohol gives you, it makes it so difficult to 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 disprove the fact that alcohol does not actually make you perform better. You know, because even in this room, I'm sure that you you guys. Okay, so would, let me would break disagree. it down. <laughs> so there's an inhibition when you are fully conscious and in charge of your your faculties. Mm -hmm. That in inhibition makes you more quote unquote morally and sexually conscious mm -hmm. not to do something. So you enter the party, I clear. You don't really want to treat a girl like that. But when you drink. The drink takes that inhibition yes. away. So you are more of your true self. And people might mistake that exposure for alcohol making you more sexually prolific. Exactly. So exactly. So it's all in your mind. So it's in your mind. And, and, and you know that the mind is the biggest sexual organ, really. Yeah. Because sex actually happens in the mind right, before, 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 yeah. it, before it gets down there. So that's why it makes it so difficult. And that's why, for instance, a lot of the aphrodisiacs are mixed or they are laced with alcohol. Alcohol based, yeah. You know, but in reality, alcohol. If 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 you actually are observant about yourself, you can tell yourself you are actually true to yourself that I perform better without alcohol than with alcohol. Or find out from your partner, especially if it's a long term partner, and then let them tell you feedback when you are when you are on, on without on you know, alcohol and when you are not. And most of the time, 
people perform better without alcohol, but that disinhibition makes it alcohol a, a, a you ferry. A you ferry. That one there, no doubt, <laughs> but it doesn't enhance but your I so no, so for boys are confusing the removal of ferry for the enhancement of even on the flip side, the women also do that to you know more or less camouflage or smooth to dissociate. No, I think bad. I don't know about women, <laughs> but I think women do it to dissociate. No, they actually say it. They say that you know, just especially if they are. Going to have the match. What kind of women have you been? <laughs> no, no, no. They say that, no, no. I'm not. No, bro. No, I'm, I'm, I'm let me pick that, on you. I don't want me to pick no, no, on no, you no, again. No, no. They say we are, we are, we have a serious conversation. Ah, so serious, we have a serious, serious conversation. Serious. Women actually also say that they take alcohol because they provided, or maybe if the sex goes bad, they would have. Yeah. You yeah. know. Um, um, the reason um, I'm saying that they do it to dissociate, in my understanding, is because either seeing people put off the light. So the consciousness of what is about to happen for a lot of people is a disinhibition. Yeah. You yeah, understand? Yeah, I'm saying that. Even I'm, though the I'm desire is to what there. you are saying. I'm saying that women also do that. You yes, know, but I'm, for men, we have not actually processed it that way. Women that consciously women take... do it to dissociate. Men do it thinking it's an enhancer. And when, and when that barrier gets down, the men get freer. So we are literally taking the same... Input, yeah, yeah, but, but because of the justification we used to take different it, justification. We, we both yeah, react differently. Yeah. Okay, so Doc, I wanted to also find out from you as well. Um, this whole thing of two minutes man, one minute man, 30 seconds yeah, man. I don't want to ask to so that maybe you have to come to the, the, this video and say that uh, uh, they fully complains <laughs> about erectile dysfunction <laughs> on air. That's why I was I waiting saw, for I saw to a bring video it of the king of Judah. The who? The lion. Uh, of Judah, mm -hmm. the king of Judah, having sex with a female lion, right, or a lioness, he didn't last more than 10 seconds. <laughs> That's a lion. It was a busy day. He was no, 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 no. I'm just saying. See, and the joke, joke was, <laughs> lion crying to me and come more than 30 seconds. Not me, Bema. I want to find out what really, is, is, is there a scientifically the proven time limit that a man is supposed, because these women are giving us pressure. It's in their mind, though. No, pressure is good. You see, pressure makes you improve. You improve on, on all oh, levels. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but having said that, human beings, um, I think there is human. There are only two spe species of animals, humans and I think whales, mm. right, who um, have sex for pleasure. Okay. All other animals, there's no pleasure. So they can do two seconds. They can do, well, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah, good. There's the work is the work. Is, pleasure is not part of their, of, of their, of their makeup or their build-up, mm. you know. Now, humans have sex not only for procreation but also for pleasure right and so having said that it means that it's not good enough for you to go have sex and just ejaculate and get the one pregnant mm. you know mm. where's the pleasure right there needs to be the pleasure component as well right and so that is where this two minutes uh, 30 second issue comes in because mm. indeed unless you are you are uh, well i don't even know who, who to describe you with you cannot bring your woman to pleasure in 30 seconds <laughs> Talk less. I mean, even two minutes cry, you might not be able to, to do oh, that. Oh, there are a few record holders. <laughs> <laughs> what I, that, 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 I'm talking about the average, the average man. Yeah. <laughs> the average man oh, will, yeah, will, struggle, will struggle to do that in two minutes. Right. Having said that, this same average man would typically um, not last longer than five minutes. You see, so we need, to, we need to understand that sex for a man, most men cannot go beyond five minutes. Okay, Most but just, I just so, so that people understand that the culture squad can is not part of this. Yeah, we are not part of it. We are only the mouthpiece. A few, of, uh, a few, yeah. a few outliers can go beyond five minutes, ten minutes. You hardly have a man reaching fifteen minutes. Oh, Doc, please, please. Oh. I've done. I've done talking about. Let's take I'm talking about now. Wait, I'm. Let, 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 let me clarify. Let yes. me clarify. I'm Doc talking is about, making me feel healthy, Papa. I'm talking about full penetrative sex. Full penetrative sex. FPS. That is <laughs> most men. Sohum, 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 yes, sohum. Yes. People can go beyond five minutes, ten minutes. Most oh. men will not go five minutes. Okay, most men will not go. Five a minutes. few, you know, can go beyond five minutes to about ten minutes. Very, very few can go past ten uh, minutes. Doc, it's tribe related in doc, this conversation. In <laughs> any way, uh, one of our, our producers, she's uh -huh. a, a female producer. Her name is Anita. She's asking if it's for the whole session or per round. So this is per round. Okay, I'm per ejaculation. Penetrate. Yes, from from start of penetration to ejaculation. Mm. You understand. Mm. Now, having said that, you'd also know that sex is not just about penetration. Mm -hmm. It starts with, the, with everything, foreplay, the foreplay. The conversation. Some of them, you have to start from breakfast and start laying the foundation. Preparing slaughter. <laughs> you have to send, send the people to go and appease the, 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 the partner for all the wrong you did in the past 24 hours. You know, make sure that the, the, the mood is right, everything is set. So all that can be classified Booking. as part of it. Uh, 
But after all is said and done, when you penetrate five minutes, about you know, there's a, it's a bell curve. Most men will fall within that five minutes um, range, you know. But again, having said that, if you are a man and you know what you are doing, you actually don't need more than more than so much time to bring yeah. a woman to climax. It's climax, mm. you see. <laughs> and this is where the challenge is, <laughs> you know. <laughs> a lot of men don't know, know what, what they are doing. doing. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, I like you on this show. Oh, but Doc, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> the Doc. last question that I will ask at 959 is what's, what song should you listen to Afrobeats or Highlight? Doc, <laughs> Join the Doc, Doc it'll be rainy day. you the spoil match. <laughs> Rainfall. The things you're the talking about. You're the spoil match. You know what they're doing. <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, in my line of work, I mean, I, 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 I have to deal with this all, but all the time. No, no, hold on. No, Doc, Seriously. I have this problem, eh? No, not, I don't have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I have this problem. I have this problem. I have this problem. I have this problem. Hey, I have this. Hey, so uh, when I tell you, uh, I they go edit this uh, way. This one, ask Doc to finish one, then I will put your part. This one, this one alone, there. Yeah. I beg you, production should send Zoom link to my wife so that I have witness. I don't have problem. Listen to me. I'm saying that I have this problem where men are expected to be performers, but our biology is set up in such a way, so it's socio biological, right? The biology of a man's sexual experience biologically. Is going to exert his body so much. Mm -hmm. That's why the moment after you start yawning, you want to sleep small, yeah. blah, blah. That's your body doing what the biology is meant to do. Yes. Then there's the social element where she's still there expecting you of course. to yeah. come back for you round know, you three. You don't finish the, the, the job. <laughs> exactly. So as everybody is listening now, it's not that only Leo or Jifoli, uh, no day form. No, 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 you go join the boot. <laughs> you go join the boot. <laughs> it's not that only Leo or Jifoli, no day form. But... How is the balance between the biology of it and the, the expectation of it? Because, my brother, <laughs> only men know that feeling. Yeah. Yeah. See, if they say the building is on fire, I'll be that Yeah. It's true. It, <laughs> yeah. Nobody can understand yeah. that feeling. But there's that expectation of being <laughs> rambo. And then I don't know at what point we are going to tangent off into pornography because I know that also affects the social yeah. and your yeah. logical aspect of it. So, Doc, somewhere along that makes the porno conversation too and also fast just to quickly and add, the damage is causing. Um, just Thank to you. quickly add to the, the, a lot of men don't know what they are doing. What exactly, what exactly, like, did, did you mean by that, you know, because um, <laughs> okay, uh, people think it's, it's automatic, penetration is automatic, so. You see, I mean, so putting the questions together, there's a cultural component to this whole sex discussion. Right. A lot of men are brought up to think that sex is just penetration. Mm. So that when they meet the woman right now, okay, so you have done all the, all the, all the toasting, everything is said, the woman has agreed. Most men want to move from point A. Like when, once they, they get on the bed or get, get on the couch, they are ready to go and move underwear and start entering things. Mm. You know, women don't work like that. You need to take them through certain stages, obviously, so that they can even get lubricated enough. You see, because if there's, not, there's no lubrication, even the, the penetration is going to be challenging. You can end up in my consulting room with friction burns, and I have seen that on, I mean, too many times. I don't know. Wow. It's, it's, it's actually, it happens. On the men. Both no, no. both parts actually, okay. but the women tend to suffer more. Right. You know, but friction burn is also happening in the men. But most men would 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 not come and report that the women will actually report that more more likely, you know. And so, you have to understand that women have different um, erogenous zones, you know. Some women you might you, you, in their ears, yeah, the neck, the, yeah, the neck. I mean, you, you guys know what they, you know. Hey, you, you know. real. <laughs> you know the 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 oh, breast. Father of three. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so that by the time you actually get to the, the main action, it's seeming possible for, for the woman to actually have one or two climaxes before the penetration. In which case, if that woman has, has actually had her climax already, your 30 seconds is not important to her. Yeah, she's good. But now you, you know, you are, already, you are a two minutes man. You two, you haven't done the, you haven't invested in a foreplay. And then now the woman is complaining so. and then you're in trouble. Now, remember that um, premature ejaculation begets premature ejaculation. What that means is that if you're a two minute man, right, and then your woman is not, or your partner is not happy with you for what you what you just done. The probability that you even do shorter the next round is higher because now anxiety too has come into the mix. You mentioned that um, the, 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 the brain, the, the neuron, mm -hmm. the psychology. You know, anxiety plays a big role mm. in sex. You know, uh, well, again, all of you are guys. Sex is an ego. It, it works on your ego. Yeah, you know? definitely. You know. In the same way, in the same way that sex can give you a positive ego boost, it can also give you a negative ego, ego boost, mm. and it all depends on your partner's experience. 
And feedback. And the feedback. And how the feedback is communicated. I actually dealt with a patient who came in with major depression and attempt, attempted suicide. Hey. And I, Yes. And the reason was that... The, <laughs> so after... Well, got two WhatsApp group, man. Uh. No. Th <laughs> this was after, after a, 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 a bout of sex. Mm -hmm. this, this guy had been hyping himself. And the girl said, okay, come and prove yourself. Then now goes to prove himself and then doesn't last long. And the girl asked the question, I any fear delegate. And this question, this question ended this guy in the in the psych ward because of in because Nakam. yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it go it go it go inside. <laughs> How is it? So was, yes, was, was he muscular too? Oh, he was a he was a you know Victor. he was a, a well about, built a, about well built about, about my height <laughs> but bigger than you feel himself die, Charlie. <laughs> you know, so sex is sex. Can actually mess 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 with your with your mm. with your mind, mm. and so you really need to understand how to treat your treat a woman. And also, uh, another mistake a lot of guys make is that they think that because this my approach worked on this. I was woman, going to say that yes, it's, it will definitely work same, on that woman. Yeah. you know, and 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 so they don't take their time to actually understand who they are, they engage. Yeah. I mean, sex is the ultimate communication, yeah. really. You know, because the focus so much is on penetration and how long you last. Some women actually don't like you to last long. Yeah. Sometimes, if you actually go beyond the five minutes, they actually tune out and then they start becoming dry. So some yeah. some women, yes, would actually yeah. be, become dry and halfway through. You start looking the... for the KY, but the light is off. Exactly. You see. So. <laughs> <laughs> so you are very experienced. You are very experienced. You are very experienced. So if you f don't, don't focus, let's, let let us not focus too much on the performance, the performance part. angle of it. That's why I mentioned the pornography because. A lot of guys yeah, get that mis. visual, just before you go mm, digital. Mm, just mm, just digital, before you go digital. digital. I just want to be an analogist for a, a bit. Mm. I, I beg you. Does size matter? Hmm, this question. Hey. Size, okay. So there's a size below which is. It matters. It, it matters. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And then there's a size above which it also matters. Okay, okay. You know, because depending on your size, but, but let me also say that ultimately it depends on what you do with your size. Okay. You see, because way. some people, and, and here again, um, this is unofficial research, but I have been told that the men who have big, you know, who are well, well endowed, yeah. mm. they are the ones who don't do anything with their, with their side. They just come in and pine. They want to get... Oh, as president of the association, <laughs> I think it's, it's because a it, it plays on their mind that's because they have it. <laughs> Your yes, friend, they don't they have do, too they much. Don't the side much. issue, I'm sure, has that reference. Yeah, you know, they don't have to invest when, much. When a man knows that maybe he's not as well endowed, he learns other ways of, ple of pleasuring mm, the their woman. partner, mm. you know. Now, if you are you're, you're, you're very well endowed, some positions are there, don't try. Because you actually hurt the woman. Mm. <laughs> yes. Like, like, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Reactions at this point in time will tell who, who is endowed and who is not well endowed yeah, yeah, in yeah. this room. I've dealt with women who have had um, a post well posterior vaginal tear, mm. which which is which is actually a deep cut in in the vagina. The vagina can tear. Yes, it can tear. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And the interesting thing is that all the ones I have dealt with, they came in after they had um, cowgirl on a, in, in, in a seated position. Mm. Oh. And their partner was. Sorry, quite some of us well are very naive to understand what's cow. what, 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 what again is cowgirl. Cowgirl? Is, okay. cow is, is, is so that the name of a uh, 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 biscuit? I think so. Uh, okay, oh, <laughs> like Piccadilly, cowgirl. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I go start recording for up there, then do a whole reel. You don't know cowgirl today. Uh, what's cowgirl? Uh, cowgirl, you when you buy cow, <laughs> but you're a girl buying the cow. <laughs> you don't <laughs> drag cow. <laughs> Cow girl seated on the man. Yes. The man lying horizontal, the girl vertically seated mm -hmm. on his grind while penetration is taking on. So the girl either has to go up or down or front or back. Uh, or as they tell the girl, use your waist to spell coconut. Kill. Use your waist to spell so coconut. That's the advice they give the girls. Use your waist to spell coconut when wow. you are doing cowbell. You don't. You are not on TikTok. Be here and be lying. So <laughs> go kill. What is TikTok? Uh, please be like, we, will, we will soon go to the uh, uh, of pornography. Uh, 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 yes. Look. Yeah, I mean, so if, if your partner is well endowed, actually, and here's the thing, the cowgirl is actually one of the positions to help the woman be in control because when the man is in control with the, who is well endowed, they can get carried away and then, you know, ram to ram deep to, yeah. and cause problems. But... When you're also on top and you're enjoying the thing too much and you, because of gravity, you come down too hard, then that penetration goes through the posterior and then bleeding everywhere and wow. it's very chaotic. So if you're well endowed, please be careful. You know, pay attention. Don't get too deep into the thing and forget that you can hurt the you woman. Hurt the woman. You know, so please pay attention to that. But you see, the thing want, sometimes okay. when it's, it's half... Yeah, you see half your powers. I was going to ask that because mm, that often, like driving the car, but I want to change spare time. Yeah, it's, because it's often, I don't know. I don't know how true that is. Um, it's, it's. I don't know if it's if it's 
If it's true. But I'm told no way, it's true. the G spots or the clitoris of a woman <laughs> is not beyond reach. Wait, you were told. My mother, you, you, go, you go to church, stop that. You know oh, it. But I was in class, they, they, they taught us. Hey. Hey, they taught Are you, you telling me all these years of experience? You don't know, be like, you don't know. Because you don't know. Are, are we, are we, are Please rephrase your question, my mother. Do you, you have sex? You have sex. You have sex. You have sex. I know it. Bro, bro, I got this. I got I, this. Handle it for me, my brother. Do you have sex? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> me, I have two children. I have sex a lot. I'm married. Me, Jay, I'm not, me, you have sex. Pa. Good. You know, you guys Yo, my guy, bro, bro. Doc, do you have sex? You guys, yes. you guys. Bro, have, there's four guys. of us here. Three yeah. of us say we have sex. Yeah. Only the Salvador. Do you have sex? I want to tweet and wait, wait, wait. I want to tweet and wait. <laughs> bro, don't make I uh, change the show. Uh, I go change the show. <laughs> Charlie, <laughs> camera, please. Men on Olele. Men on Olele. It's not about me. Please on Olele. That's real. That's again. Listen, my name is Cyril. I have sex. Yes. This is my doctor. Doctor say he has sex. Jay Foley is holding the phone. I need to. He has sex. Yeah, Only this have though. Don't we all have sex? Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> you probably politicians, swine. <laughs> yeah, but so, I'm, just, I'm just saying this because it's still back to the issue of, you know. <laughs> Somebody's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> being endowed and all that, you know, um, often the idea is you need to go full thrust. You know, you need to, you, you shouldn't even see. In the back of your, your <laughs> you understand, you know. But um, there are also um, other other materials that talk, that teach us that you know the clitoris and the, the G spot is not far beyond reach. So you how see, do you reconcile that as well? You see, that's that's why I'm saying that ultimately, if you know what you are doing, you don't you you you, you don't have to do too much. Mm. You see, because even I mean, and, and I actually told I told the client recently, even impotent men still pleasure their partners. Mm. You know, in, in impotence is a situation where your penis cannot even rise. Like, it's, right. it's, it's right. not functional. Yeah. I mean, that's impotence. Yeah. But they still find ways of, of pleasuring their partners. So mm -hmm. how do they do that? There are other things you can... Even your, your mm -hmm. hands are tools you can yeah. use. Can you so if you know what you're doing, show. you don't have to focus so much on how long you are lasting. But a woman will keep shouting deeper, deeper, deeper. Because, but, because, because, because there, are different, <laughs> there are different kinds of orgasms. Mm. There's a clitoral orgasm, which you don't, you, you don't even have to penetrate to achieve clitoral orgasm. Right. Then there's that one you're calling the about the, the G-spot, which is, again, like you said, it's not too deep. You see, but if you don't know what you're looking for, I mean, whether it's even in front of you, you can't even tell. Mm. Then there's also a deeper orgasm around around the cervix, you know. But some women, too, don't want you to get anywhere close to their cervix because it's very uncomfortable. Right. So, again, if you don't know your partner, you think that everybody wants deeper, so you just start dipping the thing. You know? <laughs> Doc, let me, let me, let me um, yeah, just sign up from the okay, we are I, want, I want to ask two questions when you're Yeah, we'll grown up uh, 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 we, uh, Doc, the conversation is very interesting. We we have extended time from our producers, but we need to sign up from radio and keep it on TV. Our producers right. also woman, are going to be on radio. Pardon me. Our producer is a woman for it's today. A woman for today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She says she wants um, 10 more minutes. Uh, yeah, for those who yeah. are. She listening. doesn't want two minutes. She wants 10 more, 10 more minutes. <laughs> yes. Oh, Anita, we will stay on yeah. on top of the issue and try and penetrate the truth. For another 10 minutes. Yes. Thank you. Um, yeah. So for those who are listening to us on Plus <laughs> FM, we want to say a bye to you. But this, uh, the show still continues on 3 Music TV. However, you can also tune into uh, your YouTube now. Search for 3 Media or 3 Music Network. You find us on there and can watch this live as we stream it on there as well. It'll be live on TV at 10 p.m. tonight and also on our YouTube uh, channel. Now we're going to be talking about uh, prostate. We're going to talk about masturbation and pornography. Still to come on the show. Doc. On that note... I wanted to find out from you two things. First of all, delay sprays, mm. delay drugs or medicines. First of all, hmm. it's, 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 every pharmacy you go into is right in front of you. Mm. These days, people don't even, even do the shell shops. Anymore. I mean, the you shell know, total. Condoms like is there, the but they'll go and get delay spray. Now, even the condoms have delay yeah. something in them. What is the science behind this? And is it recommended? Because it looks like the young boys are on that these days. So, you know, I mean, from where I sit, I mean, I'm a wellness um, doctor. That's all I do. Mm. And from where I sit, sex enhancements, um, you, 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 you really don't need them if you actually do what you're supposed to do right. And when I say what you're supposed to do, you're, you're, you're watching, you're, you're dieting, you're exercising, you know, because ultimately sex is a function that requires your heart to be in good condition. That's why we hear stories every now and then about men who died after, after having an orgasm because they, they were not fit, mm. you know. So now, these, these um, delay sprays and all these aphrodisiac uh, combinations, I mean, also weird names that are out there. Mm. Some dragon, ab above dragon. Charlie, you know, you, you, they, when you are younger, your body is quite forgiving. Mm. So you can get away with some of these things. But as you grow older, 
your risk you know begins to it begins to add up, add up. and mm. can cause you problems mm. but having said that i have actually dealt with a, a, a young man i mean early 20s i think he was 21 or 22 at the time mm. who had gone to you mentioned and viagra earlier who had gone to take viagra because he had a match he wanted to perform or he rather outperform ended up ended up with one of the complications of viagra which is parapism and what that means is that he had his erection went too long. Mm. He had an erection had for about three, you. four years. So we actually had to take him to theater. Three, four what? Hours. Hours. You have to drain you. You know. Have you seen the needle before? Tell <laughs> <I'm laughs> doctor how big the needle is. No, it's, it's big. It's big. It's big. Wow. You have to go and enter the penis and then get the valve, the blood see, vessels. The P, um, erection is all about. I, I call it pipe works. Basically, blood goes into your penis, right? Mm. And it's the blood that causes the penis to become erect. Mm. Now, the body has a mechanism where it closes off the, 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 the veins, right? So right. that the blood stays there. Right. Otherwise, if the blood comes out, then your, your penis also will, will, will become flaccid. Flat, right. <clears throat> so one, one of the ways that Viagra actually works is that it kind of it, it opens up the vessels for the blood to go in and help it. It closes it, to, it for exactly. a very long time. But Viagra is meant for people who have a challenge with getting erection. Right. You don't have a challenge. challenge. When you go and take it, there's a risk that you... Double it. Exactly. <laughs> and that's what this guy had. Shit. So then the penis... The, the, and, and sorry, when the blood stays there, the penile cells need oxygen. The oxygen mm. is coming from the blood that is locked in there. Which mm. is limited. Exactly. So after a while, the oxygen will get finished. So now the penile cells are lacking oxygen. And once cells are lacking oxygen, die. painful. Well, it starts with pain. <clears throat> and then eventually, if the oxygen is still not coming, they die. Mm. So if we don't take you to theater to go and remove that blood from there and allow new blood to come, now, your penis is dead. So that's important. We can't do anything about it. That one is dead. And this is a result of vi uh, Viagra. Yes, but not only Viagra. A lot of any other, of the drugs that any do of the, the so-called en enhancements. You know, most of them are actually pharmaceuticals that are used in such cases. But now they are being abused by people who don't need them. Right. But because of the expectation, either from they themselves or from their partners, they are for, they, well, they are mm. taking them to give them an edge, mm, mm. you know. But now, for instance, the delay spray, let, mm. let me talk about the delay spray, mm. especially if you are going to use that delay spray without a condom, for instance. It kind of, it's, it's, it's kind of cost 90, it's, neg it's a negative return, because that spray will also get on the woman. Mm. Which then means that she's also not going we'll to feel it. It's, it's pretty, pretty much, it's, it's just an anesthetic, an aesthetic um, agent. Yeah. Mm. You know, it kind of, it dulls the nerves mm. over there. So mm. you, the man, cry, you're not feeling anything. And that's Pro what then me. results in you lasting longer. Because if you're not feeling anything, then you, mm. you because if you're feeling something, then it, it will trigger one thing, another thing, and then you have your orgasm. And the woman too is not feeling anything. Right now, the, you're not feeling, the woman is not okay, feeling anything. All you see, of you are just going. Before we go to prostate, just no, just, yeah, yeah, okay, let's, so the delay sprays, left. mostly lidocaine or exactly. procomail, exactly. hey. blah, blah, blah. Hey, they, bra. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, they just are like topical. Bible yes, to ease the sensation. Yes. Now, the reason why the sensation is, is needs to be eased is not necessarily because of a physical defect in most people, it's because of the psychological mm -hmm. excitement, yeah. over sensation, stuff like that. So, if we are saying let's not use the delay sprays, how do you then control that? Because the, 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 the delay spray, I I I I so like, the like, delay spray is um, more like why, an why are you to delay a spray? Hello? psych <laughs> problem, not necessarily a physical problem. So, if you say don't use the delay spray or it's not advised. What would be the remedy for that cycle? No, but you see, here's the thing: if 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 you are you are you are a fit young man, naturally, your your you your, your, there's a certain level of of tolerance that you have, even with the stimulation. Mm -hmm. And the other side too is that you get better with practice. <laughs> so see, the girl shouldn't be bad that you wasted the first match. Of course, and even even classically, the first round tends to be shorter than the second round. Classically, for a lot of people, of course, there are also those who yeah, are, first, the, yeah. you know, but reverse, yeah. classically, the first round tends Both to be teams to score. <laughs> then the second round tends to be a bit, a bit longer, you know. So there are so many, there are so many other Doc, ways of doing this. Guys, I beg you, no, guys, just six seconds, just six seconds. I beg you, I beg you please, I beg you. because we need to touch Chairman, on these six subjects. Seconds, six seconds, I beg you, <laughs> please, don't. Still, still on that one, because Jimmy, working out, mm -hmm. right? Uh, there's a belief that there are some type of, you know, uh, fitness um, workouts, you know. Um, shadows or whatever that allows you to build that kind of resistance or delay yeah. natural delays yeah. is, is that true and if i so, mean cardio workouts would help you definitely cardio mm. would help you you know improve your 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 sexual stamina mm. you know kegels even though we speak about kegels for women mm -hmm. can also help men as well right enhance their sexual um, stamina and um, pleasure as well in, mm. in orga um, when it comes to orgasm right but when you say gymming like going to lift weights that one not likely mm. because the problem too is that 
a lot of people who are lifting weights tend to take certain other supplements, supplements. which actually could inhibit your sexual performance, mm -hmm. especially, especially if they are, they are laced with steroids, steroids and yeah. other you know, uh, um, chemicals. You see, so weightlifting does not equate to in, um, increased sexual performance. However, cardio you know, can help you improve your sexual performance. It's because wow. if your heart is weak and you're exert, because sex is exertional. That's why when you, when you finish, you sleep. You know, it's, it's not rocket science. When you, it's very exertional, mm, you know. And so if yeah. your heart is not healthy, your, your tolerance okay. cannot be. Um, Doc, there are three things we need to touch on quickly. So we just wanted to uh, make it, uh, this one is just to lead <laughs> us into conversations about uh, prostate, uh, you know, cancer and, and all that, which also affects, you know, uh, sex. How often must a man have sex? <laughs> so there's really there's really no number whether minimum or maximum. But what we know is that if you have the more sex, <laughs> I mean with the, with the information that's coming out is saying that if you have, I have some people listening, they are listening right now. It's somebody a has a question, question for Lily. I'll just pitch yeah. it in before we go to prostate, please. <laughs> so so the, the the more sex, the more ejaculation you actually have, the lower your risk um, of developing prostate cancer. The the jury is still not settled yet because there are re there are different research that is conflicting so we, you know it's, it's still information that is coming small small but at least we know that if you have if you ejaculate uh, at least at least once every day is good for your health so that means that uh, masturbation so masturbation yeah, it's, it's a controversial subject especially when you look at the religious implications right but masturbation has its good side and also has health. its bad side you know but health health is also situated in a, in a, in a society so you have to uh, you have understand where you are you see because um the the biggest challenge with masturbation actually is that a lot of the young guys who engage and and guys suffer a lot of, of the negative effects than women even though women also have the negative effects but today is the guys because they hide in corners to masturbate they tend to um, be in a hurry right so they do it quickly and then they clean up and they go it's it, it sets up a, a vicious cycle in their heads of in what their the brain, process should be like. what the process should be like so that when they now come in contact with the real woman performance is lacking the performance is lacking so a lot of the younger uh, younger guys who suffer premature ejaculation is actually a complication of masturbation mm. the older guys who suffer premature ejaculation have other causes but for the younger age you've the, programmed your body to get rid of it quickly at speed of life exactly so that one unless you you you, you find a way to break that habit you know, and it's not easy. It's not an overnight thing. Some people might even need psychologists, you know, to actually help them, you know, re, sort re, of re, yeah. re, reorient their, their, their mind. Their mind. Otherwise, you never, you never get think, out of I it. I think it ties into your pornography question now. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I saw somewhere that pornography kills people. Yes, so yes. Yeah. Because yeah. pornography, one, gives you a warped expectation. So when women watch pornography, they are expecting their man to be a certain size. And then last a certain length, forgetting that there's a lot of cuts and I mean some of the pornography scenes if you read about them can take days to actually complete. Mm, complete yeah. You know, but you you just watch the thing for ten minutes and you expect your man to do ten minutes. So when the man now doesn't do ten minutes, then he's a, he's a, he's not good enough. Yeah, good enough. And then I mentioned earlier that that premature ejaculation episode it will now be compounded so that subsequently he or he, the man will not be able to overcome it because of the, that expectation on him, the pressure, the anxiety will even worsen it. You see, so pornography and uh, masturbation come together to give you um, a, a terrible experience, to put, to put it mildly. So I spoke the business for a lot of boys this morning. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, I'm, one I'm question, somebody plenty. has a question to yeah. Olele. And they say, and Olele. we have to wrap up in just a minute. Yeah, yeah. So Olele, um, you say you don't have sex, but why so many questions? <laughs> Ah, <laughs> so what? I, so I, we can't. No, no, it's from it's from my fans. <laughs> It's okay. I'll, wow. I'll do it later. Doc, I mean, this this conversation will never end. I know. Never end. There's so much for us to grasp from it. And uh, I mean, <clears throat> but thank you for joining us on uh, this morning. And I, I will just plead with our uh, producers to give us part two because um, there are other areas for us to touch A on as well now uh, with regards to um, illnesses, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. go deeper. So we, we only know of prostate, deeper, but deeper, prostate go cancer, deeper. STIs, all that. STIs <laughs> and all that as well. And um, the ones that show on men, the ones that don't show on men, it's yeah. risk, but we, we wish we could look, we could look into effects. that extra or side effect. So producers will plead with you to try and help us uh, get a part two of this conversation. Doc, thank you so very much for joining us on uh, this morning. Doc, someone says, ask him, Chabidi. The, the, the <laughs> last thing is high life or Afrobeat, which is better during them? Because it's a music show. Silence. Silence is better. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, on that note, we're back here at the same time tomorrow, right here on Culture Daily with Olele, a.k.a. And then see you, aka sexo. Ah, okay, I hear you. No, we are out. You can call me sexo. <laughs> <laughs>